Okay, the second part of section 6.2, we've talked about kites, and a kite was a quadrilateral, a type of quadrilateral, but there's another type of quadrilateral that we're going to look at, and it's called a trapezoid. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So you've got some different examples here of what a trapezoid might look like. Trapezoids could be this, and you can see that the arrows, if you remember that from topic 4, the arrows are showing that these two sides are the parallel sides. Okay, and then we've got four sides total, that's why it's a quadrilateral, but when one pair is parallel, the other pair of sides are not parallel, that's called a trapezoid. Okay, here's another example of a trapezoid. The tick marks here show that these legs are congruent to each other, but they're not always that way. These distances are different, they're not congruent to each other, you don't see the tick marks. Um, they don't always have to sit this way, if the parallel sides go this way, that's still a trapezoid, okay? And there's possible that you could have right angles within a trapezoid, but not all the angles would be right angles. So these are just different orientations of what a trapezoid might look like, okay? The parallel sides are called bases. So if I have a trapezoid here, if this side in this trapezoid is parallel to this side, these are the parallel sides, so we call those the bases of the trapezoid. So in this particular case, these two sides would be the bases, but over here, these two sides would be considered the bases. Okay, so it's just the parallel sides are bases. The other two sides are called legs. We also have base angles, uh, and we have base angles at the top also. Okay, and we call this base 1, this is a little subscript 1, and this is a subscript 2. That really doesn't matter. You can switch those around as well, but one would probably go at the top and two would go at the bottom. Okay, so we also have what's called an isosceles. An isosceles trapezoid. Um, we had, we've looked at what an isosceles triangle was. In topic four, when we had an isosceles triangle, Okay, an isosceles triangle meant that two of the sides were congruent to each other. That's what isosceles means. So when it comes to an isosceles trapezoid, that means that the non-parallel sides, the legs, are going to be congruent to each other. So anytime you see tick marks in th through the legs, you know that those distances are equal and you have an isosceles trapezoid. So it's not all trapezoids are isosceles. So if you don't see the tick marks, then it's not isosceles. You have to see the tick marks there. Go ahead and turn your page. Okay, some things that we know about the trapezoid. Okay, it says each pair of base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent to each other. Okay, so if it's an isosceles trapezoid, meaning these legs are congruent, then these two base angles are going to be equal to each other. And these two base angles are going to be equal to each other. Now that's only true in an isosceles trapezoid. If the trapezoid is not isosceles, then these base angles aren't going to be congruent. Okay, so notice over here, we don't see the tick marks. This is not isosceles. So these two base angles are not the same measure. It's only going to be true in an isosceles trapezoid. But what's true for both of them is because we have parallel lines, okay, because we have parallel lines in a trapezoid, these two angles are always going to add up to 180. Okay, that's because those would be same side interior angles in relationship to those parallel lines. And these two angles are going to equal 180 as well because we have parallel sides. These are same side interior, which makes them supplementary. Go over here and you look at this. This, these two angles right there, they're going to equal 180. Okay, and this pair here is also going to equal 180. That is true for every trapezoid. That's always going to be true. Okay, it says the converse of that property is true also. If a pair of base angles are congruent, then the trapezoid is isosceles. Um, notice that in both examples above, each pair of angles is supplementary. So again, these add up to 180, these add up to 180, top to bottom, they add up 180, these add up to 180.
Okay, that's true for all trapezoids, and that's because they have those parallel lines. We're looking at same side interior angles. Okay, another thing about a trapezoid, it says the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. Okay, and again, this has to be an isosceles trapezoid. So, got the tick marks in the legs, that tells you that those are congruent, they're the same length. Okay, that means that this length, this diagonal, the length of it is the same as this diagonal. Those links are equal to each other. Now you'll use that to find different measurements. It says all horizontal beams of the high voltage transmission tower are parallel to the ground. Okay, so if these are parallel, okay, that would make that top section a trapezoid. Okay, this is parallel to the ground, so that makes this little section right here a trapezoid. And same thing here, these are all parallel to each other, so that makes this middle section a trapezoid. They're all trapezoids. Okay, um, the center section is an isosceles trapezoid. Notice that these distances are 14 feet, so this in the middle is an isosceles trapezoid. These two not necessarily. It says if the measure of angle 1 is equal to 138 degrees, what is the measure of angle 2? So we're going to focus our attention on this trapezoid up here. Okay, that's a trapezoid. These are the parallel pieces. It says the measure of angle 1 up here is 138 degrees. Okay, you'd have to ask yourself, is this an isosceles trapezoid? Well, this is 10 feet for this leg, this is 10 feet for that leg, so that's true. So that means that this angle over here is also 138. In an isosceles trapezoid, the two base angles are congruent to each other. Okay, then the next thing that we know about an isosceles triangle is that these two angles have to equal 180. So I know that the 138 plus angle 2 has got to equal 180. So if I subtract 138 from 180, the angle 2, the measure of angle 2 is going to equal okay, 42 degrees. Okay, this would be 42 degrees, and over here, if I needed that one, that would be 42 degrees. Okay, that's only true in an isosceles tra uh, trapezoid, but that's what I have. So I would say 42 degrees is my answer. Okay, let's turn the page. Okay, the last thing that you need to know about a trapezoid um, is that a trapezoid has what's called a mid-segment. Okay, it defines a mid-segment of a trapezoid is a segment with endpoints at the midpoints of the legs of the trapezoid. So here's my trapezoid. These are the two parallel sides right here. That makes these two sides of the trapezoid legs. And if we find the midpoint of each leg and we connect that, this line right here is called the mid-segment. That's the line we're talking about. It says, the mid, like the mid-segment of a triangle, uh, the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to the bases. So these two were parallel in the trapezoid. This mid-segment is parallel to both of those. So what happens is we end up with a trapezoid on the top and a trapezoid on the bottom. And the length of this piece right here, the length of that mid-segment, is the average of the two bases of the bigger trapezoid. So if we average 24 and 32, we average them by adding them together and dividing by 2. We can come up with the distance of the mid-segment. Okay? Another way to look at this, okay, because sometimes it's not the mid-segment that you're trying to find. It's either the top base or the bottom base. But another thing to notice is that when you look at those distances, to, to go from the smaller to the mid-segment, you're adding 4 units to it. To go from 24 to 28, it's 4 bigger. And to go from 28 to 32, okay, you're also adding four units. That should be equal, there should be an equal distance in between all three of those lines if they're averages, if the middle is the average of the other two. 
Okay. Um, it says, notice that the mid-segment also divides the trapezoid into two smaller trapezoids. So here we have, we have a trapezoid down here. Okay. That has all the properties of the trapezoids we talked about with the angle measures and things. And then we have a second trapezoid up here. And that has the same uh, characteristics as we've talked about. Okay. So here's my picture. It says, what is the length of segment PQ? This is PQ right here. It's the middle. Okay. How do I find that distance? Well, I want to average the two ends of the trapezoid, the two bases. I want to average them. So to average something, we add them up, and we divide by how many there are. There's two of them, so I'm going to divide by two. If I add these up, I get 87 over 2. That would be 43.5. Okay, so 43.5 centimeters is that middle segment. And again, I just want you to notice that if I look at the distance between these two, um, this is going, you can think of it as going down or you can think of it as going up. Okay, if I start with the smaller one, this is 10 and a half bigger. Okay, to go from 33 to 43.5, you're adding 10 and a half. And if I add another 10 and a half to this, I get to 54. So this distance between the, the three numbers here is going to be the same because this line is an average of the top and the bottom. Okay, now go back to that worksheet, Kites and Trapezoids, and finish it. You can start with question seven and finish the worksheet about trapezoids.